Jesus. Uh, it's such a joy and pleasure to be with all of you and uh, uh, welcome all of you to Salvation International Fellowship. We want to encourage you to keep coming every week and uh, join with us in fellowship and uh, be encouraged, uh, be empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit and also uh, you're welcome to be a part of our family, the Salvation International Fellowship is a family who cares for each other, who is praying for each other, and we really want to appreciate those who are coming to the church regularly and uh, having fellowship with all of us. May the good Lord bless you uh, in abundance. Amen. Uh, this evening, uh, this evening, uh, I want to preach uh, from the book of Acts as I want to continue from where I left last time. I was preaching about uh, how the church began, and we see that history in the book of Acts. Now, the vision of Salvation International Fellowship is to be a New Testament church. That means it's not a building, but you are the church, and I am the church. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That means either, uh, even though we are very small, but Jesus is in the midst of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are called to be the church. We are called to represent um, Christ in the world. And so what can we learn from the church that was started in the beginning? It's very uh, important that we learn how they started, what are the values they had, how they, uh, they were together, how they were worshipping, what were their traditions, and this will really help us so that we also represent the true value that we have in Jesus Christ. You know, when you read about the early church in the book of Acts, it's a different church to the church that is existing now. They were worshipping in houses. Probably they were worshipping under the tree, but today we are sitting in the air conditioned rooms and we are worshipping. We are worshipping in large gatherings. I mean, label churches as uh, house churches or maybe mega churches. There are different titles that people have given. But when we get back to the book of Acts, we learn what the church truly is and what Jesus meant the church to be and what was the mission of the church and uh, what, are the, uh, what are some of the responsibilities the Lord has given to the church? All right. So I'm not saying the church in the beginning was perfect. No. All through the centuries, we have imperfections. Because the church in the early church, the church had Peter and John as its leaders. But at the same time, we also see of Ananias and Sapphira, who lied to the Holy Spirit. It was us. It was good to see the spectacular answers to prayers. But we also see that uh, during those times, two of the disciples were martyred. Two of the followers of Jesus were martyred. So the early church, as soon as it began, it was not a bed of roses. It was not happy and merry all the time. But they encountered persecution. They had problems. They had uh, internal conflicts. And also they had external conflicts. But, the, uh, but however, when you look into the uh, book of Acts, we see the things that happened during those times are compelling. And we see that there were uh, amazing things that has happened. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We find this in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done to the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And 
the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So we, do, we see a different picture here. Unlike today's church, they were gathering every day, every single day they were gathering together. They were having fellowship. Unlike today's church, they were breaking the bread every day. And there was awe upon every soul. There was the fear of the Lord upon the people. And they were seeing signs and wonders. Every single day, people were healed. They were able to see amazing, extraordinary miracles they were able to see in those times. And it says that those who, were, those who were believing, they were all together and they had all things in common. They were helping one another. They were compassionate to one another. They were meeting the needs of other people. So we see such a happy picture of the church. At the same time, we see the Holy Spirit at work in the church. Well, uh, reading the book of Acts and reading some of the scriptures, I want to draw a few points with you this evening uh, and I want to share. The first thing that I've observed is that, the first thing, they were devoted themselves to fervent prayers and intercession that displayed the power of God. You know, the early church, the Bible tells us, you can see a number of scriptures in the next slide, Acts 1.14, they say they all met together and were constantly united in prayer. Acts 1, 24-25. Then, then they all prayed. And when they prayed to choose the disciple, another disciple. Acts 2, 42, they devoted themselves to prayer. Acts 6, 4, the disciples announced, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Acts 12, Five. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. So we see that one of the core values of the church was prayer. And, the, um, and one of the greatest things that I have seen in them is that they were praying together. They were a church that was praying together. Not only praying alone, but the greatest strength is praying together. You know, prayer is a, prayer is a hard thing for all of us, right? There are seasons in my life, maybe in your life, it's quite difficult. <clears throat> you are not consistent in prayer. Life gets very dusty and busy. There are distractions around us. And our prayer life, prayer life takes a hit. And me. our prayer life takes a hit and we, uh, we, we don't pray as much as we are supposed to pray. And so, my suspicion is that many professing Christians today, those who come to church, are struggling with this. And it's common because we have our weaknesses. As Sister said, we have our weaknesses. And we are, uh, we do not, we are not able to focus. And so what happens is that uh, because of many of the distractions, we are not able to pray. But we see that the church was praying together. And we can see amazing things happen. In the, books, in the book of Acts alone, it tells us that there are, I think, um, more than 40 times, okay, the early church, in, in the book of Acts, more than 40 times it is written, their church prayed together. That means they valued prayer so much. And you know, the book of Acts provides a recorded history of the vital prayers played in the lives of disciples. The way they prayed, they completely dependent on God. In fact, when they pray, prayer precedes almost every major event of the early church. Firstly, we see they prayed and they waited. We see the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon them. Secondly, we see that God uses prayer to lead people to salvation in Christ. We see thousands coming to the Lord because the church was praying. Thirdly, we see God answers specific prayers to rescue his disciples. You know, in our life, if you want to see extraordinary things, amazing things happening in our life, if you want to see life transform, if we want to see our church grow, and if you want to see maybe your family, your relatives come to the Lord, I think we need to get on our knees and pray. And the important thing is the church, in the, the early church, is teaching us is that we pray together. Husband, wife coming together and praying together. 
there you find strength. Father, mother, parents coming together and praying, we will be able to see amazing things. Strongholds broken, people getting healed, and we can see some amazing things. In Acts chapter 12, you know, because the church prayed, you know, when Peter was in prison, because the disciples were, the, uh, the disciples were preaching the gospel, and King Agrippa, Herod the Agrippa, wanted to torture the Christians. So he killed James, and then the disciple, and then he put Peter in prison because it pleased the Jewish people. The Jewish people were very happy because the disciples were being killed, they were persecuted, and now he put Peter in prison so that the, all, the, all the Jewish people will be very happy, saying that King Agrippa is really great. And so because of that, he put uh, uh, Peter in prison. What happened was the church was praying very earnestly. This is what the Bible says. And as the church was praying earnestly, God answered the prayer of this church. You know, they put 16 guards in order to guard Peter. Four by four. They were all there, maybe four here and four there. And they were all the way in the prison. He was behind the iron bar and his, his hands were tied with... Uh, him so that he doesn't escape. That was the situation. And you know what happened when the church prayed, the Lord answered by sending an angel. And the angel goes, walks straight into, uh, into where Peter was lying. And he goes and wakes up Peter and says, Peter, wake up. And the Bible tells us that the chains fell off immediately. He doesn't have to take something and cut the chains. But as they locked, and this is what prayer does. When you pray, God answers and God rescues them. And we see in some ways that the church, when they prayed fervently, when they interceded, the power of God was displayed. You know, when we come together as a family, as a church, and we pray for various things that is happening in this world, in our society, in our family, in our individual life, I think there will be more power. We will be able to see quick answers. The church was praying. It was hardly a day. And Peter was rescued from that prison. Secondly, what I see is that the early church displayed bold faith that produced radical obedience and the power of God. Secondly, they displayed bold faith that produced radical obedience and the power of God. You know, Peter, when, uh, when in Acts chapter 4, we see that after they performed the miracle, the council, the Sanhedrin called them and said, the authorities called them and said, well, you are not supposed to do on the Sabbath. Why are you healing people? Why are you doing this? Why are you blaspheming the name of God? They said, we will put you in prison. Do not preach Jesus again. But, you know, Peter, he said, we would rather obey God than man. Okay? He said, we would rather obey God than men. You know, these people were a bunch of timid people, I said last time. They were very timid. They were hiding for their lives. But you see, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to say, in Acts chapter 4, verse 24, he said, we must obey God rather than human beings. That means they must have boldness. They must have such a bold faith. Otherwise, they, would, they wouldn't have stood uh, uh, stood against them and say, okay, uh, we will obey God rather than you. Acts chapter 4, 29 to 39, he says, they prayed, the disciples prayed and said, and now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. They were praying for boldness. And so God gives them, stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the meeting place shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. You know, when we want to do certain things, we need the power of God in our lives. And you know, as I was telling you, when they prayed together, they received the power of God. And because of that, they were able to do extraordinary things. And now they prayed for boldness. 
and the Lord gave them boldness and they began to preach in the streets. They began to preach in the temples. They began to stand before great kings and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the one who died on the cross and is able to heal people and deliver people. So you know, we see that these people, they simply they believe in the promise of Jesus. Jesus said, you know, go and preach the gospel and I will be with you. And Jesus said, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You shall heal the sick. You shall cast out demons. And these people, they believe in the words of Jesus. And because they believe in the words of Jesus, because they obey the command of Jesus, now they are able to do extraordinary things. When people saw these things, right from the upper room, people began to wonder, what is happening with these guys? They are like drunk people speaking in unknown tongues. And these people are babbling, and they are now they are on the street, they are healing people, and they have turned the world upside down. Because the church prayed together. Because the church had bold faith and they obeyed God and they had radical obedience. In John chapter 3, we see the healing of the lame man who was lame from his birth. As Peter and John were walking into the temple, you know, that man was right there. The Bible tells us that every single day people would bring him and put him at the entrance of the temple and he would beg. To the people, those are coming in and those who are coming out. Remember, this man is a lame from the birth, you know, and no doctors could heal him. There was no solution for him to walk again. The entire city knows him because uh, they were coming to the uh, temple and they were going. So for a long time, people know this man is lame from his birth. And now Peter and John, they come there. And, there's, and, and the man looks at, he, at them and, and they were expecting, he was expecting something. He was probably begging. And so now Peter and James looks at that man and said, and said, silver or gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And you know what happened to the amazement of everybody? This man was laid from his birth as Peter stretched out his hand and said, Get up in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that his knees were strengthened. The power of God began to work and he began to rise up and he began to jump and walk. The Bible tells us as people saw, they were astounded. He said, We have never seen such a miracle before. How did this happen? This happened because the disciples displayed great faith. They displayed radical obedience. They were praying together. And that is why this man who was lame from his birth was healed in the name of Jesus. Dear friends, can God do miracles, extraordinary things in our midst today? Yes, yes He can do. If you believe, if I believe. If we display bold faith in the name of Jesus. If we come together and if we pray, you know what will happen is that they, we will be able to see amazing things. Peter says, you know, I do not have silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. Everyone say, I have Jesus. I, I have, have Jesus. Jesus. So if we have Jesus, we will be able to see amazing and wonderful things. And you know, as they were seeing the miracles and wonders. You know, they began to they began to wonder, and they, the Bible tells us they perceived that they were with Jesus. They perceived that they were with Jesus. Who were with Jesus? These ordinary people, these fishermen, these uneducated people, these who are doing extraordinary miracles. They are turning the world upside down with signs and wonders. These were with Jesus, friends. When we are with Jesus, when we spend time with Jesus, you know, you and I will become a different person. When we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. The demons will flee when you go up, lay hands on the sick. When you preach the gospel, people will receive Jesus into their lives. And that was an extraordinary thing that we see in the early church. Thirdly, 
They were united in heart and mind that drove generosity and compassion. The Bible tells us all the believers were united in hearts and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. It was a radical change and transformation that happened. They said, I don't want to keep the blessing with me. I don't want to keep Jesus with me. I want to share the blessing. I want to share what Jesus has given me. I want to share the life that Jesus has given to other people. I want to share uh, uh, the things that I have. So in 44 it says, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possession. Isn't it radical? Mm -hmm. Isn't it bold? They were, and they said, and their belongings, and began distributing to all of them, those who had need. Every day, they gathered together. You know, when they gave, they were not grieving, they were not unhappy. The Bible tells us that they were joyously, generously, they were giving to all people. They had generous hearts. They had hearts which were filled with gladness. That was the church we see, the early church. Okay? So, as South Asian International Fellowship, we can also become one of those churches where we are recognizing people's needs and meeting their needs. We can do more. Yes, we are doing, but we can do more than what, uh, what uh, we really have to do. And so, uh, dear friends, I want to encourage us from the, uh, as I was encouraging all of us to read the book of Acts, because from that, from that, uh, from from the book of Acts, there are so many lessons uh, we can learn. There are so many principles that we can learn. Uh, we can be encouraged how the church began and how they stood uh, when there were trials, when there was persecution. They were standing strong. They were standing strong, even though we are a small congregation, but. I know Jesus is with us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is in our midst. The early church was not a mega church. The early church was a mega church. But they were all spread out. Because they obeyed Jesus. They obeyed the command of Jesus to go into all the world. From Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. And they were not constantly in one place. But they gathered in houses. They went from village to village. And they began to preach the gospel. And Jesus says, when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And Jesus was there confirming miracles and signs and wonders. And so we don't have to worry about numbers. You know, we don't have to worry about numbers, being a big church, being a mega church. Because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Lord is doing the work all over the world. Therefore, we have to go and preach the gospel. We have to go and disciple people. We have to go and baptize people in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, Lo, I am with you till the end of the ages. Shall we bow our heads and pray? The early church was a church in action. The church was so committed. The church was so devoted to prayer. Dear church, Let's come together, united in prayer. Not just praying alone, but know from the early church that when you pray together, when two people come in agreement and ask anything, Jesus said it will be done in heaven. And so I want to encourage you, get somebody to pray with. Ask the Lord to give you to help you to connect with somebody so that you can go and pray with them. Husbands, wives, pray together. Families, pray together. And because we see in the early church, they, when they prayed together, the power of God was displayed. There were healings and signs and wonders. People were being saved. Secondly, God wants us to display bold faith. Because out of the bold faith, we see radical obedience. We see the power of God demonstrated. God wants us to be a church which is generous, which is reaching out to people, which is changing and transforming the lives of people, our community, and our nation and the world. And so, let us come to ourselves this evening and say, Lord, I want to be somebody who is praying all the time, consistently praying. 
forward in my prayer, oh God, and I want to be a church, I want to be a follower of you who is displaying bold faith like the disciples did in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trials and temptation, they stood strong and your power was demonstrated. Today, God is able to use you in a mighty way if you stand for the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless every one of us. Bless our church. Lord, thank we you, thank you, Lord, for the vision you have given thank to be a New you. Testament type of church to represent the word of God for you, in your name, O oh Lord. Lord, in some ways, we want to be like the early church, O oh Lord, who were always, every day, coming together, praying together, Lord. And, Lord, they were reaching their community. They were, Lord, reaching the lost. And they displayed, O oh Lord, bold faith. And the world was turned upside down. Lord, I pray that you will empower each and every one of us. We thank you for the vision. We thank you for every single member of Safe Church, O oh Lord. And all the uh, four language services that we are holding. I pray that each one of them will be on fire for you. Each one of us will go out and win souls, O oh Lord. We will be ambassadors for Christ and light in the world and salt of the earth, O oh God. Thank you. We give you all the glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen.